Hallelujah. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Amen. I'm Pastor Tony K. Thomas of the Foundation of Power Outreach Ministries in Sanford, North Carolina, and I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful time to be alive in the Lord, knowing that there you shall never see death and that you will live forevermore. Not when you leave this world, but right now, you can never see death. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you for joining us for tonight's Bible study as we continue with the story of, of the raising of Lazarus, but the how to, to get a miracle answered. Praise be the living God from John chapter 11. But before we get started, I just want to let you know I'm a new author. I've written three books, and the book I want to highlight this month is Why Are People Afraid of Love? Praise be the living God. We just finished Valentine's, and this book is written for those who have had many failed relationships, but sometimes the Bible says that though a righteous man fall, he gets back up again, or a righteous person, for the Lord holds his hand, he doesn't fall headlong. Listen, it's time for you to begin to prepare yourself for the gift of love that comes from above that has no sorrow to it. It's good and it's perfect. Praise be the living God. I just want to read a little bit from this book. And it says, remember this and never forget it. Lasting love requires work. Many people are seeking relationship, but they forget the work that it will require. A relationship isn't a want, but lots of work. As a former metallurgist and material scientist, I know that getting metals to the purest stage of processes takes intense heat. Lots of fires required to get materials to their boiling point. Then the impurities will surface and can be removed. A few impurities will remain. There is no such thing as a perfect love match. Nevertheless, there is love made by working together and occasionally removing the remaining impurities. This is what God wants to do for us. Purify our hearts so that those few impurities will not hinder the love process and growth in our relationship. Love needs fire, and these fire will bring the desire to work on what is needed to develop into something special and lasting. We can call this the passion in lovemaking, not in the bedroom, but in our hearts. Why are people afraid of love? Reverend Tony K. Thomas. You'll find this on my website, Reverend Tony K. Thomas Books .com, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever you find books. And while you're there, you can also find my first book, Loneliness, God's Gift to the Single, and the signature book, Love School, A Divine Education in Love. Reverend Tony K. Thomas, books.com. Praise be the living God. Give the Lord some praise. Thank you, Jesus, for putting the gifts and the tools and the skills and abilities in the earth. I want to let you know that God truly loves you and want you to have the love that comes from above. Amen. Praise be to the living God. Let's go to the nice Bible study. Let's go to a word of prayer. Father, once again we come. We ask that you illuminate our minds and us, our spiritual eyes that we may see. Open our ears that we may hear. But also, Lord, give us the willingness to follow. To follow you beyond where we've been. Lord, I think that the words spoken would be something that would shake us, bring us out of our slumber, but also give us a peace and awareness of your presence. Let us know no matter what we see, that you are near. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise be the living God. You know, we've taken our time through this study, and you can see that we're uncovering things. It's really a beautiful way. I, I've never done this. Because, see, as a, as a minister and, a, and, a, and a, a servant of God, I never wanted to rush. It takes time to really, really grow in God. 
I think the church, in a lot of ways, have missed a lot of points of how to develop a believer. Jesus didn't tell us to come and build buildings. He said build people. The buildings we do need. But I've never seen a building go up in the rapture. The rapture is going to be God's people. When Jesus comes back, he's coming back for those who belong to him. I want you to understand something that we need to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, every single day. It's a growing process. Salvation is a journey, amen, that when we start, we should be going higher, higher, and higher. Praise be the living God. Look with me at verse number 21 in John chapter 11. And we see that Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again. In the resurrection of the last day, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And here's the, the, the title of this message. Do you believe this? Part 7. Now I want you to meditate, body of Christ. I want to tell you what I just read to you is all we need to say at every believer's funeral. We don't need to go into all this other stuff. One thing you don't have to do, you don't have to try to make a miracle out of nothing. When someone passes away, you don't have to make them so great. You must understand that you need to, you need to know this. If they truly believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they'll never see death. And though they're dead, they shall live. I want you to know something, that we just sleep. If there's nothing else you got out of this message in, in, in these last six weeks, you need to have the assurance and understanding that why are you living and why are you shaking in your boots when every time something happens, you, you're walking around, you're scared to die. When you shouldn't be afraid of death because death has no power over you if you believe. I want you to understand something that, you know, we get there and you can tell every, everybody's at the same place where somebody dies. I don't care who you are. I don't care how great your name was in the earth. But you're shaking because that is a part of, of, of your faith and a part of the word and understanding it that you don't, you don't know because you can't, you don't, can't have that experience unless you die. But I can I have the experience through the word of God and the trust in Jesus. Are you listening to me today? And I'm telling you something that sometimes you 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 got to just accept what God says and put it in your heart and truly believe it. Let's go on. And in verse 27, she said to him, Yes, Lord. How many times have you said, Yes, Lord? Listen to me. In this teaching, most of you are going to be unmasked. Your prayer life is going to be unmasked. What I find is that we're in a church that's prayerless. That most people don't pray. Most people don't know how to pray because they have no faith in their prayer. Because they never had a personal relationship of knowing Jesus. Now I want to tell you something. Martha was at that place. We can say the words around other folks. We can get around the crowd and we can say all the big, but when you get alone, how do you talk to God? How do you pray to God? Are you listening to me? Do you even pray to God? How come I seek it Basanda? Because see, the knowledge that you have of Christ is going to be the victory that you get out of prayer. Are you listening to me? See, I want you to see it. She said, Yes, Lord, I have believed. Watch this, that you are the Christ, the Son of God, 
even he who over who comes into the world. Now I just wanted you to look at these these, these this group of scriptures from verse 21 to 27 real quick. I want to tell you that this is probably the most important dialogue in the Bible when it comes to believers belief in the eternal security in Christ after one leaves this world. I want you to understand something. Look at those words in red. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. That's very powerful people. I want to share something with you. This ain't for everybody. The gospel is for whosoever will. The gospel is not a one-time experience that you just get it and pat your feet. The gospel requires you to grow, to become a disciple. It means to be taught by the Lord. Are right, you listening to me? I want you to understand something and continually be taught by the Lord. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. You know, this ain't talking about mental ascent. This is not talking about somebody that, I mean, this is truly believing people. I want to tell you something. This is truly believing in your heart in Jesus. Are right, you listening to me today? And I want you to say, he said this to you. Do you believe this? I want you to know something. I'd rather have this spoken over me or during the time of my home going celebration when I'm not going to be there than anything else. I believe this. I believe that I'm not going to die. I believe that I'm only going to sleep until Jesus comes again. I believe that I'm going to be present with the Lord. I believe this. Are oh, you listening to me today? I want to tell you something. That, that God's will is that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. It's also everybody's going to be born, they live, and they die, and then the judgment. How you go through that, it doesn't matter. The point is, that while you was living, did you make Jesus Christ your choice? Did you bear fruit of repentance and righteousness? Hallelujah. Did you have the hope? Did you, did you let your light shine among men? That they saw the glory of God in your life? Look what he said. So Martha is sitting here and she sort of sounded religious because he didn't ask her if she believed that he was the Christ. He asked her that she believe that if someone believes in him, they'll never die. You see, when you go to prayer, you know what you need. But you, if you don't even go to prayer and ask God what you need, you go and talking to God, oh, Lord, mighty, sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, uh, coming on the wings of an eagle and all this and all that, and you never said what you need from God. You thought that you was coming to God with much repetition and glorifying Him, and He sit there and say, what do you want? Are you listening to me today? I want you to understand, she didn't answer the question. He said, do you believe this? And she said, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even who comes into the world. Listen to me. She was talking about her relationship with God. But I want you to see, Jesus was talking about Lazarus. He said, your brother will rise again. I want you to understand that when you come to God in prayer, you need to be serious to the point. You need to ask for what you need. You don't need to be all of a sudden all over there on the other side of the mountain. You need to say, mountain, I want this mountain moved. In Jesus' name. I want you to see that this is probably one of the most important dialogues. Why is it taking us all this time? Because we need to know. I want to tell you, as we speak, and I said this prophetically, life expectancy is decreasing. 
and now they put out a report. I want you to understand something, that if you're going to get it done today, you better get it done. You better stop putting off today for tomorrow. It's time to live for the Lord. It's time to put your mind on the Lord like David said, meditate day and night. And you'll be in great success. Or listen to me, you better stop looking to the left and to the right. You better stop wondering about who's going to make it and who's not. You better make it. Because narrow is the way. And fewer they that find it. This is why this ain't for everybody. God knows who's going to be a certain person. Now watch this. We don't have to do a whole lot of explaining when someone dies. Jesus didn't do a lot of explaining, nor did he ask her if she understood. He didn't ask her, do you understand all how all this work? He just said, do you believe it? Let me tell you something. I, I went to sleep Sunday night. And I meditated on something. Yes, I've asked you to memorize Psalm 91. I believe it's a psalm of prayer protection, but is Psalm 91 more important than the authority he gave the apostles that they can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover? Whatever city you go to, heal the sick. Did you know that God has given us authority to heal the sick? I want you to understand something. That God has healed the story. Did you know that when folks get affected with COVID-19, they're sick? Did you know that God has placed in the earth apostles and disciples who believe the word of God? That when they go to a city, he said, heal the sick. Now watch this. Cleanse the lepers and raise the dead. I went to bed because, see, that's my ministry. Ever since I've been in the ministry, I have not been ashamed of the gospel. You've heard me say over and over that I want to see blind eyes open. I want to see the lame walk. I want to see the mute talk. I want to see the deaf hear. I want to see the dead raised. You know, that's more, that's more powerful than having 30,000 people out in the audience. What's going to benefit the city? I want to tell you something, that God has given us authority. He says, I've given you authority over all the power of the evil one, and nothing shall harm or injure you. I'm telling you, you can't separate the gifts of God. It's a protection. I want to tell you that when you were sitting in the audience and you're sitting there sick and you waiting for somebody to call you out, you better come up. You better step out and step up in faith. You better call for the elders and they shall pray over you, anointing you with oil. And the prayer of faith shall raise up the sick. And if they committed any sins, it shall be forgiven. How do I know this? Because I believe it. I want you to understand something today. I'm talking about the things that God has given us. You don't have to explain it. You don't need to understand it. Just believe it. When I lay hands on someone, I believe they are healed. I don't have to understand it. I don't have to prove it. I don't have to explain it. When you pass away, and I don't see you on this side no more. I know you're in the presence of God because I don't have to explain it. I don't have to understand it. I just believe it because Jesus said it right here. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? He simply asked her, if she believed it. Martha really didn't answer Christ on her understanding but that she knew who Jesus was and is and that will be enough for her. She simply put her trust in the Lord. I want you to understand something. That Martha was simply telling Jesus I believe you're the Christ. 
I want you to understand something. She simply put her trust in the Lord. You see, there comes a time when you have to just believe for yourself. I want you to realize I want you to allow these words to sink into your mind. Do you believe this? What I'm trying to say, you got a lot of things around you today. That's why you don't find the television on too much in my house. You don't find me with a lot of chatter talking about this and that. The only person I can talk to for me is the Holy Spirit. I can allow the devil to talk to me if I choose. But I choose not to talk to the devil because the devil is nothing but a liar. He has no truth in him. Or right, listen to me today. I want you to understand something that it comes a time when you just got to believe for yourself. I want you to, to allow these words to sink into your mind. Do you believe this? See, it is easy to say that you believe this while the Bible study or church service is going on. What about when a loved one dies? See, it's easy for us to believe these things when we just, uh, when we're sitting there and we're, uh, we're in church, we're in agreement, we listen to the music, listen to the song, but do you believe it? Hallelujah. When uh, do you believe it when a loved one dies? You know, we get up and we say, Oh, I know. Todd, do you really know that? Or is it just an emotional saying? I want to tell you something. I watch people's lives because the Bible said, You shall know a tree by its fruit. Are y'all listening to me today? I want you to understand, he says, a good tree will bring forth good fruit. They're going to possess the fruit of the Spirit. Are right, you listening to me? They're going to be hungry for the Word of God. They're going to be hungry for God's presence. They're going to... I told you something. That when Jesus comes and you're not ready, you're going to cry out, rocks, hide me. Follow me. You're going to be doing exactly what you've always been done, doing, running from God instead of to God. I want you to understand something that you need to understand that when Martha heard that Jesus had just entered the, 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 close by, she didn't wait for Jesus to come. She quickly got up and met him. Are right, you listening to me today? There should be an urgency about you. Are you listening to me? Or when you are in a trial or some tribulation, do you believe this? Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? Do you believe that he has the answer to your situation? Martha still had no idea, though, that a miracle was going to be performed. You will find out that she she had been in company with the crowd and their words was all about where is Jesus? Where is Jesus at now? If only he was here. You know how many people I don't let many people into my presence. But I'm going to tell you something. If you come to visit me and, I'm out, and say for instance I'm in a trial and tribulation Hardest, you better be coming to raise me up. I mean, but most people come and visit and they wag their head and say, where is your hope in God now? They're waiting for you to fall. And they're waiting to, to judge your faith and, and to see you cripple and scrink and cry out instead of hope in despair. I want you to see something that that they always, the crowd is always asking, where is Jesus? If only he was here. Think about this. Is this how you pray? When you go in prayer, 
Do you go there wondering where is God at and all this? Do you know when you wonder where God is, that'll keep you from praying? I don't understand how hard the heart is. I've known people and I see people. They can go through trials after trial after trial and never pray. Are you listening to me? I want you to understand something. Thinking I'm going to pray and believe for you is not going to do this. It's not going to do the same if you don't believe because the answer will come and you won't even see it. The answer was standing right there in front of Martha. But Martha has considered Lazarus as dead and a goner. Even though Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Are you listening to me today? Scripture says that Abraham had hope against hope. He, in spite of his deadness of his, of, 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 of his age and the deadness of Sarah's womb, he grew strong in faith, putting his trust in the one who was able to perform it, who promised it was able to perform it. I want to tell you today, is your hope and trust in God? Do you believe it? Think about this. Is this how you pray? More importantly, is this how you praise? I want to tell you, if you can't give God a praise while you're in the prison, while you're in the lion's den, while you're going in the fire, I want you to understand something. The Hebrew boys dressed it up in their clothes of celebration, just in their garments they had on. They were giving God a praise. I want to tell you something. That I'm talking to you tonight personally. What's your attitude when you go to God in prayer? When you go to God and there, yes, there's a bad report, but that's not God's report. God's report is God is good all the time. Amen? Somehow you're going to get glory out of every situation. By taking our time and just digging a little deeper, we are uncovering the ways a miracle come into our lives. We pray, but after the prayer, we got to wait. Well, this story tells us a lot is going on inside our soul, with ourselves and others that are watching and waiting with us. Who really believes or who is really, who really is believing? I'm going to tell you something. I've seen those who preach the word of faith still shaking in, in unbelief. You see, it's a difference when you got to believe. Some experiences is there for you to grow. Are you listening to me today? Some of the tribulation and challenges is there for you to grow. Are you listening to me? God knows that he's not going anywhere. And God is very near you in your situation. But you got to wait. You see, how you wait on a miracle determines if you're going to receive a miracle. You see, most people, we can't wait on God. We'll never get down to two fish and five loaves. We'll never get down to our last bit of oil and meal. We'll never get down to our last might. We'll never get down. Are oh, you listening to me? Because we're always wanting, we can't stand being uncomfortable. But I want you to understand something. That God want to get you down to a place where you have to believe him. Do you believe this? That's why I'm never comfortable. Because I know everything I got belongs to God. I know that God tell me tonight to give it all away. I have to give it all away. I give it away because I know that on the other side is something greater. That's a different growth. Are oh, you listening to me today? I want you to understand something. You must have this attitude that you brought nothing in the world. 
and you're going to take nothing with you. Paul said that you've got to learn to persevere, be insulted. Are you listening to me? you got to learn to be with and without. Because God, grace, is sufficient. When you're weak, He's strong. Well, this story tells us a lot is, is going on inside our soul and others that are watching and waiting with us. Who really believes? I want you to know whether or not Lazarus comes back, he is still with the Lord. What looked like a problem to you, where it looked like that God wasn't there, if he'd only been there, God is still there. Jesus said Lazarus is asleep. I want you to understand something, that, that, that whether God answered your prayer or not, God is still there. Amen. He might answer your prayer by not answering your prayer. Have you ever done some things and at the end of it you go, God, thank you for not answering that prayer? Many times in my life, I had to give God a wink and a thumbs up. Because he was able to do and see what I couldn't understand. God is still here, people. Do you know that Jesus is there? Now watch this. I want you to know no matter which way it goes, I am going to put my trust in the Lord. Psalm 91 and verse 2 said, In him will I trust. Have you already made that your decision, no matter how it goes with COVID-19 or any other plague? I'm going to trust in the Lord. Because the Lord said, it shall not come near my dwelling. No evil shall approach me. Are you listening to me today? I want you to understand, you should find comfort every day before you even lay down to sleep, even take a nap. Won't you meditate on those things? Won't you meditate on the comfort of knowing that in him will I trust. Are you listening to me? Look at verse 28. And when she has said these things, hallelujah, and when she has said these things, she went away and called Mary, her sister. This is very important. Saying secretly, underline that word, secretly, there's nothing insignificant about God. Word. Everything is important. Even these characters are important. But it's not about Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. It's not about Thomas. It's not about the disciples. It's not about the Jews. It's about you in 2021. What a wonder. It's about how you approach God. It's about what you do before a miracle comes. You believe in God for a miracle, you got to wait. But you got to wait in hope. You got to wait in faith. Are right, you listening to me? You got to wait trusting God. You can't doubt God. You got to believe God. He's already told you who He is. Jesus don't have to come down and say, I am. Jesus doesn't have to tell us He's the resurrection and the life. He died and rose again on the third day. That's enough. Is that enough? That's enough. I don't care when you were born. Even those from yesteryear, even those that will come, it's still enough. Where I go, I prepare a place for you. There you will come too. He already there. Verse 28. The teacher is here. Now watch this. She didn't tell everybody. She, Mary was in a crowd, just like you. You got the television on every room. You got every warning on your phone. You got a conversation in your house. But it's not holy. It's not full of faith. It's full of what's going on in the world. Think about it, people. This is the crowd. They come to console you every day. When COVID first came, the television news said, Facts, not fear. That lasted. They, did, they, they were full of fear. 
I believe they get the most fearful news announcers to tell the news today. Because the first thing they want to do is scare you with the numbers and scare you with the impossibilities. Are you listening to me now? They get excited on bad news. But I want to tell you something. You got to let the bad news go. Secretly, the Holy Spirit is talking to you. Secretly, the Holy Spirit whispers in your ear, Jesus is Lord. Look what she said. The teacher's here and is calling for you. Do you know that in the midst of all that televisions and all that report, all the conversations you have on the phone with other folks who are frightful and scared, scared the Holy Spirit is knocking at your door and calling to you. Don't be afraid. Fear not. I am with you wherever you go. You don't have time. You can't hear that. But you can hear every negative report even if it ain't got nothing to do with you. You see, the news just can't say somebody died. They got to tell you what they died from so they can scare you. It don't scare me, folks. When it's somebody's time to go, it's their time to go. When it's my time to go, it's my time to go. Blessed be the Lord. That he find me believing rather than doubting. Fear not. The Holy Spirit right now is calling some of you. Secretly. Even as I speak, some of you right now where you are, some of you sitting here listening to me tonight live in the broadcast, and some of you that's going to do this later through YouTube or television, the teacher is here. In the midst of all the crowds that come to console you, in all the media that comes to say, fast, not fear, but scare the heck out of you, I watched some of you, you running from COVID-19 instead of COVID-19 running from you. He didn't say run in the house and dash off your clothes and leave your mail five miles away. Who told you that? Maybe you should believe the word of God. When COVID-19 sees me, it's got to reverse itself because I possess something. 91 Devog. Nothing shall approach me. I believe this. You know what? The crowd around me can all hear this and go, oh, your day gonna come. So what? I've been brought into the secret place. Jesus Martha came to Mary secretly and said, the teacher is here. He's asking for you. God is asking you tonight, do you believe this? And when she heard it, look, watch this. <clears throat> and when Martha heard it, and then Mary heard it, she got up quickly and was coming to him. I want to share something with you. I've been pastoring 27 years. I've been knowing the Lord for 39 years. I've seen very few people come to church quickly. God is watching all of us. Are you listening to me today? What's hard about being there for prayer? To meet the Lord, to get your mind off of yesterday. Come there for worship. Are right, listen to me today. I want you to understand something. That she got up quickly. You know why? They were waiting. They've been waiting for Jesus since Lazarus was sick. And Jesus waited the four days after he died. I want you to understand some. Most of you will stop praying then. Will you think your situation is done over and there's no more hope? You never get down to your last mite. You'll never get down to your last cake of bread. Are you listening to me today? 
you'll be ready to cut a deal and cut a deal, cut a deal, and put yourself greater in debt or more in doubt. But Mary ran quickly and was coming to him. Let me tell you something. You've got to go out and meet God. God never come meet you when it comes to a miracle. The woman that had the issue of blood came to touch the hem of his garment. The four friends brought the paralyzed man to Jesus. Are right, you listening to me today? I want you to understand something. That when Jesus walked by, blind Barnum made a scream out loud and loud. She, he couldn't get to him, but he got Jesus' attention. She was coming. I told you this ain't for everybody. But all these years I watch people. I'm sitting there getting ready to preach and doors open. Folks come in and sit down. It's very distracting to the Spirit of God, but that's, nevertheless, I have to continue. But are you coming to meet Jesus? Or are you just coming? Mary moved quickly and was coming to him. Now watch this. I want you to notice that Martha didn't make a show that Jesus had come. See, so often when it is impressed upon us that God is near, we can't wait to tell the world. You know why we do, we do that? Because we don't want the people to think that we're crazy. See there, I believe in God did show up. That ain't what she did. She went secretly to Mary. You know why we do that? Because we are full of pride. Amen? And we really doubt it. I can tell you from my knowledge and experience with receiving miracles from the Lord that I've learned to not say anything until after the miracle has been given or performed. Secretly lets me know that Martha and Mary had a different knowledge of the Lord than the regular followers and crowd. Are you listening to me today? The answer to our prayers is drawing near. When you recognize that the answer is near you, you have to move quickly and come to the giver and the miracle worker. So often we sit gazing at our phones, our television, waiting. I want to tell you something. Last year was a powerful year. It says time to see God. What did you see? I saw God every day. I'm telling you something that I, I spend uh, most of my day in prayer, reflection, thinking about His glory. And I'm strong. Are oh, you listening to me today? I haven't lost my mind. I look at people and the things they say, I know they're about to lose their mind. I trust God. And you know what people tell me? Well, you don't do anything. You ain't, you ain't going nowhere. What? Don't you, can't you read the handwriting on the wall? There is nowhere to go but to the Lord. Prayer is very powerful. All right, listen to me today. Look what he said. Secretly lets me know that Martha and Mary had a different knowledge of the Lord than their regular followers. The answer to our prayers is drawing near. When you recognize that the answer is near, you have to move quickly. So often we sit. I would tell you that the sound of the bridegroom can't be heard when you are distracted by your surroundings. Mary got up quickly to go and meet the Lord. I want you to understand that. Mary got up quickly to go and meet the Lord. Verse 30. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha met him. Think about that. Because guess what? When the answer comes, 
it doesn't move. You don't have to worry about God's word changing. You don't have to worry about his promises changing. Or right, listen to me. It's in the same place. It's waiting on you. You see, while you're waiting for a miracle, don't you know a miracle is waiting on you? I want you to understand how it wait on you. Don't doubt. Don't be afraid. Know that God is with you wherever you go, that he will uphold you by his mighty right hand. It's waiting on you to finally get yourself together. Like Psalms 91 verse 2, in him I would trust, in him I would trust, in him I would trust. It's waiting on you. It doesn't move. Guess what? We believe in the same miracle. And if I believe in the miracle, it's waiting on you in the same place where I believe. Look what he said. Notice that Jesus isn't running after or towards you, but you got to come to meet him. You got to meet him daily, people. Seven times a day, I will give him praise. Daniel met him every day. Three times a day, he met the Lord. I want to tell you something, that when you do need a miracle, God is, is, is right on time. Guess what? Put me in the lion's den. I'm going to be doing in the lion's den what I do in my, at 718. Praising and, and worshiping and praying. Lying ain't going to have no taste for me. Are you listening to me today? Look at verse 31. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and consoling her. Now here's what I'm saying. What is in your house that's consoling you? Think about it. Don't, don't lie to, to yourself. What's in your house? What channel is your television on? How often is it on? What is your phone on? Who's on speed dial? Amen. What stations you got set for the news update and everything? Who can you give a negative report to? Because there's certain people you can't talk to about negativity. Now watch this. Because that's who's consoling you. When they saw that Mary got up quickly and went out, they followed her. Did you know that even though you come into God in prayer, that your distractions are coming with you. That's why you can't pray so long. I mean, all of a sudden something tapping you on the on, on your neck and said, "Oh, it's time for the news. It's five o'clock." Oh, or it says it's dinner time. Or it taps you around and say, "Oh, you better call such and such. You know they go to bed early." Or boom, Bob, you better check the update. All this mess that's distracting us that we think we need when we're going through. Watch this. And they thought of her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Underline that word, weep there. The world around you, are you listening to me? Even churchgoers at, at most places, they expect you to be crying when you're going through your trials and tribulations. They expect you to have a bad day. They come and watch you like Job, friends, watched him. Why haven't you lost your mind? What did you do wrong to deserve such an awful time? Are right, you listening to me? I want you to know your distractions will follow you. It is up to you to stop listening to them and follow your faith. Remember, that faith doesn't hesitate. You got to move quickly to the miracle. To the miracle worker. What are you doing while you believe in God for healing? What are you doing while you believe in God for a financial blessing? What are you doing, God, while you believe in God for divine protection? We all got something we believe in God for. Miracles or it should be natural in our lives. Minute by minute, miracle working power. What are you doing? Why are you trying to get through this addiction? 
I always have a saying, if you feel the urge to soothe your nerve, read the word. Because the word in you will work for you. Eventually, we all been there, people. Yours ain't no stronger than nobody else's. Jesus has been there. He set a man free with 2,000 demons. He can set you free with your one and two. In the name of Jesus. I want you to see something there. Your distraction is going to follow you. It's going to remind you. We're here for you. We're here for you. We're in the same boat. You better... Be careful. And therefore when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him. Right now, close your eyes. Can you see Jesus walking on the water in the midst of the storm? Can you see Jesus lying in the boat when everything else has been lost? Asleep? Can you see Jesus speaking peace to the storm? Can you see Jesus? And when she saw him, she fell at his feet. I'm going to tell you something. I would love to see people come to the foundation of power. The moment you open that door, you come in, fall at your feet to worship him. I want God's glory to be so strong as 632 West Main Street. That's when we have a great church service. When you feel the presence of God to the point that it makes you cry out to Him. It worship. Honoring Him. Now here's the difference. Martha told Him who He was. Mary showed Him who He was. She bowed. Look what it said. Saying to Him, Lord. You see, you got to be careful, people. You can't, you know, most of our prayers goes nowhere. Aren't you glad that God just hear them but don't act upon them? Aren't you like, aren't you glad God is not like man? See, I have things in my soul and I ask God, how did you walk around and not get angry? How did you walk around and just can't forgive everybody? How you walk around being look? Didn't you hear what they said about you? I've heard what they said about me. Yeah, how you want me to forgive? I have to. It ain't that easy, people. That's when you know you're saved. Because you want to obey God. Look what he said. In verse 32, it says, Saying to him, Where did she get this from? They didn't get this from the teaching of Jesus. They got this from the crowd. They got this from their surroundings. Martha came out there talking it. Because she just left the crowd. You better listen to me. Many of you, you come to church, and I look at you, I can tell that you ain't been with the Lord. I mean, you got your mask sucked so far back, it's, it, it's all the way back around your ears. And you're in panic, man. Because you ain't been with the Lord. You've been with every diagnosed, every lie on television that says you're going to get it. And you're doing all you can to prevent from getting it instead of coming to worship Jesus. You see, when you come to God in prayer, your distractions come there too. That's why you can't pray so long. Look what it said. Lord, if you've been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus heard that from Martha. Are right, you listening to me? Because they got this from the association with the crowd. The crowd would tell you it's over. There's no hope but you in God. But my Bible tell me in Psalm 3, David says, But the Lord is, is my shield. He's the glory and the lifter of my head. I want you to know something today. My brother would not have died. They see the finality. I want to tell you, when you're believing God for a miracle, you got to understand the only reason why you need a miracle because your circumstances is in a dying straits. 
it's over. Only God can change it. That's where they were. Stop right here. Don't you criticize Martha. And don't you criticize Mary. This is a conversation that is in your house. May I ask you a question? What is the real conversation in your house during this pandemic? What's your real conversation? Or right, listen to me. You can't wait to tell somebody some of your secrets for surviving. I just laugh at people. Are right, you listen to me today? I'm I just like, where do they get this stuff from? I want you to understand. Look what it said. May I? What, what, what are you listening to in your house? What are you convincing one another <coughs> is working? If you come to my house, I'm going to tell you that the word is working mightily in me. And it will work mightily in you. How many times you allow doubt, worry, fear, and even unbelief to be spoken of right in your presence or even out of your mouth? Key, you want to write this down. The key to receiving a miracle. Are y'all ready for this? Just write down the word key to receiving a miracle is don't tell Jesus what he can and cannot do. If you're going to receive a miracle, you can't tell Jesus what he can and cannot do. Look at verse 33. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? I only got one more minute. But I want you to think about that. Everything around Jesus is crying without hope. Did you know that when you come to God in prayer and your nervousness and your fear, be honest, Jesus got to remind you of what you came there for. And what he come to meet you for. He come to give you a miracle. Aren't you glad that, that he didn't come and put his hands on your shoulder and say it's over child. You'll never see your brother again. You'll never walk again. You'll never see again. You'll never love again. You'll never forgive again. You'll never give again. You'll never, never, ever, whatever you come there for, he's saying, you're right. There's no hope. No. We're going to end here. Jesus always reminds you of what he come there to do. A miracle for you. Where have you laid him? See, in your mind, you're thinking that he's just come there to mourn and console you. But God come to do some mighty miracle working power for you. I hope you see in this story tonight. We're going to end there. I hope you see how your prayers are answered. How you have to wait on God. What you need to be doing. You need to be going deeper in his word. And have the confidence and assurance. That Jesus is Lord. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Let us take our cares to you. Let us know, Lord, that you understand our sorrow. You understand our griefs, for you bore it. But, Lord, you did it so we can have well-being in our mind, our soul, and our spirit. Thank you for the answer, oh God, in putting our trust in you. In Jesus' name, let the word spoken tonight bring light to our soul in hope. When we go in prayer in the coming days, let us go in seeing you, the miracle worker. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Won't you give the Lord some praise? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For he is worthy of all our praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise be to the living God.
Thank you, Jesus.